Wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you once again. I welcome everybody on board uh, today's live session with we'll be renting with Akin Rokpo on Legacy Hot. So, uh, I should have started earlier than now, but the second device I wanted to I used to capture uh, the Facebook uh, people, followers, uh, wasn't really uh, working as expected. So, I had to jettison the uh, that aspect of uh, the Facebook. So here we are on Instagram. I will soon post few of these, uh, the you know the footage you know on Facebook, so that they too can have access to the information. So quick one. I don't intend to take our time, like I did promise about a month ago when we started uh, this episode live session, uh, Legacy Hot with parenting with our King Rocco. I promise that it's not going to be. Uh, you know, more than 30 minutes so that we can all get back to our different works. And at the same time, this is the, uh, the period for the school runs for parents, you know, dads and moms who have the obligation to go pick their children, to go pick their children uh, from their uh, respective schools. So now what brought about today's topic is quite simple. Uh, last week when I did uh, the you know on Ovation International Television on our TV the topic the episode that was aired you know is about was about you know becoming a great parent and I did say from that episode you know on TV I spoke among other things that becoming a great parent is not actually a sprint it's not a sprint not as you know something that uh, can be achieved you know on a highway you know, of uh, parenting, know that people have to be, parents have to be, you know, very patient and at the same time they have to put enough diligence in it. And I remember I did say it's not a print but a pace. It's a journey. You just have to, you know, go through it uh, by the day. For every step you take in your parenting journey every day, every positive step is a right step, uh, right process in the direction of being, uh, you know, a great parent. So, you know, and then the questions uh, were posted on uh, Twitter handle. At the same time, some even sent, you know, a private message to me. So that is one of those private messages that was sent. Is what I want to pick today. And with the permission of the person that sent it, I explained to him, and he said, please explain it out there so that people uh, that are actually in its shoe could learn what I've actually, you know, explained to him over the phone when we spoke. So what was the question? The question is, myself and my husband create time for our children. Uh, we go to pick them in the school. We never allow them to stray around, you know, we are with them. 24-7 in a way, uh, you know, we watch everything they do, we watch everything they do, we give them enough quality time, you know, TV, we regulate the TV, we regulate the social media involvement, almost everything they regulate in a bid for them, you know, to uh, get uh, the children on the right track because they want to really reinforce positive behavior in them. And I remember uh, that has been, I mean, that's one of my learning philosophies. Uh, one of our learning philosophies in Piramac Consulting is raising children. The purpose of raising children is to reinforce positive values in our children. Every other purposes, every other objectives of parenting is secondary. Every one of them is secondary, but the main purpose, the main objective of parenting is reinforcing positive values in our children. So we must be able to work, you know, fastidiously, you know, getting uh, things right to make sure that these positive values we want to raise in our children, we must know how to do it. And that's why when you hear that some parents, you know, 24-7, they're, they're with their children, you know, they, they engage their children you know those were the days that we used to say uh, that parents are not involved when i said you know those i mean gone were the days i didn't really mean like 20 40 years ago like maybe five ten years ago but i want to tell us now that 
parents are getting more involved in the lives of their children right now. Every parent out there can actually bear me witness. You know, there is this massive, you know, awareness about parenting, about quality parenting, you know, raising quality children uh, for the world, you know. And, you know, when a child is well raised, uh, three institutions in the world will benefit from the uh, effective raising of children. The first one, the children themselves, they benefit from it. Then the family, the immediate family, the parents will benefit uh, from that. Then the, the, the third one is the larger society. Larger society will benefit uh, from that. And that is why I always say, it is not how best my children are raised. It is not how well, how superb, how qualitative my children are raised. It is how best, how strong, how effective, how positive the children outside the world that they are going to relate with are raised. So if I decide to raise my own children very well, you know, everything, uh, the, 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 the right value, the right qualities, they have them. What about when they go outside? So that is why we don't need, you know, to be, uh, 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 to be so personal about this. You know, we don't need to do that. It is not about your own children. It's about the other children around there because no society, no child, no adult is insusceptible to the influence of the larger society. So we must be able to know what we're doing. When we're talking about, I have time for my children, I create time for them, I engage them. What do you engage them with? So I'm not surprised when the woman put a call across to me and she lamented, you know, her frustration about the fact that, fine, they have time, her husband, I mean, does what he's supposed to do as a, as a father. Then she too does what, does what she's supposed to do as a mother. So where is the problem? So that was why I titled this, The Missing Link. And that is why I want every parent out there, teachers, to really pay attention to the topic that we have today on Legacy Hot with Akin Rocco on episode 36. Okay, now, the first thing I want our parents to pay attention to, one of the missing links is this. Don't think impose. Think expose. The first one is don't think impose. Think expose. One of the challenges that I had at the earliest point, earliest, uh, earliest period of my parenting journey is what I have here. So it's, uh, what I'm giving out here is a curriculum, is a module that I've practiced in my house, in my home, and some other homes that are actually closer to me or some of our clients, they have this. This is what I've practiced and it's working. So at the early stage of my life, uh, 17 years ago when I became uh, a father, when I became a father, this is what I was practicing. I like to impose because uh, many values, many things my parents, my dad wanted me to know. People around me wanted me to know. They imposed them on me. They wanted me to behave in a certain manner. So the same way we want our children to behave in right manner. No parent, with due respect to every one of us, no parent, I've not, maybe there are some, but I don't think I've come across any of those parents who willfully will want uh, his or her children or a child, you know, to stray away, you know, to, uh, you know, to begin to, uh, to progress brazenly in error. I've never met any parent of that, of such nature. I have never. So every one of us, we, are, we, are, we, we try, we strive to be intentional in the way we want to raise our children. But in trying to be intentional, there are many things because we have not put our emotions in check. If we have not put our emotions in check, we are likely going to mismanage the children God has given unto us. If we approach raising positive values in our children, if we approach it with our raw emotions, there is no way we are not going to mismanage them. And that is when we put pressure on them. That is when we impose values. That is when we impose, you know, certain behavioral pattern 
in them, it will not work. I will tell you the reason why it will not work. Kids have been given options. We've been giving them options about, you know, right from when they were toddlers, what they're going to eat, uh, where they're going to play, what they're going, the kind of game, when they like get to like age two, age three, the kind of game we want them to hold. You know, at that particular time, they've been conditioned to work, to do certain things in certain manner, right? They've been conditioned that when they cry, immediately we stuff the mouth with what? You know, the mom stuffed the mouth with uh, breast milk. We don't even know whether, I mean, that maybe it wasn't the food that the baby wanted. Maybe it's something else that the baby wanted. But the fact that our mind are conditioned that when the baby is crying, the next thing is, is hungry, right? So we do all those things. So there comes a particular time that we think that uh, the children are getting too much used to this you know, uh, that we, we uh, getting to, uh, to, to being pampered. We begin to think otherwise. So that is when we now introduce certain measures. We now create boundaries around them. So I don't have any problem with us creating boundaries. And at the same time, I don't have any pro problem in us wanting them to behave in certain manner because I believe mandatory conduct is part of life. Mandatory conduct is part of life, but there are some negative baggages that this mandatory uh, conduct carry around. So when kids are forced to do something, please, let's pay attention to this. When kids are forced to do something, they do it, but learning effect does not take place. Let me take that again. When kids are forced to do something, when we know, regardless of the chores in the house, when we force them, to do those chores. Learning effect, experiential learning, has not taken place, will not take place, and will never take place. When they do it, with respect to, our, to us, when they do it, it's because they don't want us to beat them. It's because they don't want us to abuse, they don't want us to manhandle them, and they don't want us to uh, spoken, they don't want us to speak to them in certain manner. They just do it. Let me just do it. Let me do it. Let me satisfy my dad. Let me satisfy my mom. And they leave the place. Experiential learning has not taken place. When experiential learning has not taken place, the last thing that will happen to them is they will not own their own. The ownership of their, the ownership of their behavior is lacking. So how do we solve the problem of imposing on them? Because while I was, many people, if you have used to me uh, talking about parenting uh, for some time now, you will always know that I will always say this. When I was with my dad, a lot of things were forced on me. A lot of things were imposed on me to do, right? And my dad thought I was obedient. He thought, oh my God, this, this is the best thing that can happen to him, right? Because my dad was a tough man. Okay, so... If any child, when I was growing up with my dad in the early 80s, if any child cried in our compound, in our house, they knew it could never be me. Because they knew that this particular guy that you are seeing now, right? This man that you are seeing, that he was a gentle boy. I became a reference point for other children around the community that can't you behave like this guy? That the guy is so quiet, he will never go to where is that did not send him to go. He will never join people playing football around, you know, doing all those stuff. But guess what? When I left my dad, all those things that were imposed upon me, I put them down and I unleashed the terror that has been, terrors that have been suppressed for some time inside of me, I unleashed them against my mom, the poor woman. So that was when it was done on people around my mom that, oh, this guy, so what happened? We thought the guy was really obedient. So he wasn't really obedient after all. So that is exactly what imposition do, you know, to our children. So what we do, we expose them. How do we expose them? We give them opportunities to solve particular problems we want them to solve. We give them opportunities to do certain chores you know, the way they think 
they would do it and arrive at the solution. About last two episodes ago, I spoke about science class. Science class is a metaphor that I used to uh, drive home the point that I wanted to, uh, the point I wanted to uh, pass across at that particular time was a point of connection, you know, connecting with children. And I did say, if you were not part of that uh, live session, I did say that now science class has two comp components. Science class has two components. One component is lecture room. The other component is laboratory. So while teachers discuss, teacher discuss about, you know, the theory in the laboratory, the theory in the laboratory, when they discuss the theory in the laboratory, the, uh, uh, sorry, the theory in the lecture room, the practicals will take place in the laboratory. So the same way, when we teach our children, <coughs> excuse me, when we reinforce our positive values in them, when we try to let them know this is how to behave, when we try to uh, give them rules and regulations about many things that we do in the house, right? Where we provide laboratory for them is where we allow them to think deep from their inner mind and bring a solution to whatever choice, to whatever problem they encounter. So this is what exposure does to our children. Exposure will give them that opportunity to own their behavior. So whatever anything that happens on today, they know how to go about it. They know how to handle. But when we impose, see, throughout the world, no child, no student likes things to be imposed upon them. Even the way, the same way adults, we don't like many things to be imposed upon us. That is why many of us, we cry foul today, you know, against government imposition of certain rules over us. At times, we even say that government don't even consult us. They just wake up one day and they come up with one draconian rule and we reject. So the same way this thing happens to children as well. Many things we impose on them, they may do it, but learning effect has not taken place. The moment they leave us, that is when the true color, you know, of their behavior will be revealed. That takes care of, don't think impose, think exposure. Think expose. That's number one. Number two, look for triggers. Look, let us look for triggers in our children. So the woman that put a call across to me that said they had time, uh, almost they had time for their children, but they can't still, uh, you know, appreciate the fact that the children are still not connecting with the right values they want them to grow with. They still, they are not happy. Despite the fact that they have time, they have everything. And I told them, have you been able to find out the trigger of your children. Every child, every adult, every follower has maybe like four, five, or six triggers. What do they do? What do triggers do? Triggers is a point of connection. Triggers is a point of motivation. When a leader finds out the trigger of the followers, then he begins to connect with them through that entry point, through that point, through the point of trigger. So let me cite examples of the triggers that, uh, you know, that the children, <coughs> excuse me, the triggers that the children may likely want to look out for. It's possible they are looking for, you know, uh, a pleasant parent. They are looking for a parent or parents that dress well. At times, Parents, we don't know that these children watch, watch us. At times, they tell us that, Mom, I don't like the kind of dress you wore to school last week when you came to pick me. Oh, Dad, I don't like the way uh, you dress. Don't be wearing this shirt to our school again. Or don't be wearing this shirt in the compound again. Many times, my son has told me. Many times, he has, you know, scanned through... Uh, my dress, you know, my wardrobe, 
and he has come to say, Dad, I don't think you should be wearing this thing again. Why, are you, why do you still want to be wearing this as if you are still a teenager? You are no longer, you are no longer, what do you think you are? Are you still, I mean, do you think you are still in town? You know all those things, but he will tell me that I don't wear this again. So I will listen. So that means that one of the triggers for that guy is pleasant look. The same thing could happen, <clears throat> excuse me, the same thing could happen to the mothers, right? So the second one could be money gift, monetary gift. Some children like gift. It could be monetary gift. It could be material gift. It could be some other thing. Some children like that. They like gift. They want to be showered, you know, uh, a, a gift on. They just want it that when dad goes out, when mom comes out, oh, take this, take this. They love it. So they must know if it is monetary gift. Please pay attention to this. If it is monetary gift, teach them to be accountable to those money. When you, whatever money you give them, if it is as small as 10 naira, as small as 5 naira, they must be able to account for how it's being spent. Not that when they now receive that money, they just cross across the road or run around in the estate and begin to look for where, you know, to expend the money. No, they must account for every monetary gift, every material gift we give them. We must be able to just figure this out. It's one of the triggers. Another one of the triggers is verbal praise. Some children like to be praised. They like to be praised. But in praising them, we must not do over praising. Uh, if there is a time, maybe next week or some other time, I want to uh, talk about over praising. Because another area where you know parents are getting it wrong is over praising the children fine we speak it you know our parenting ex expert we say that that we must be able to praise our children and that's why we have it in today's curriculum right that we must give them you know verbal praise some children they just like verbal praise but there are ways we do this that will not jeopardize their self-esteem there are ways we do this that will not make them to think they're on top of the world wow this is me this is me right so there are ways to do that there are start strategies to do that but nevertheless one of the triggers is verbal praise so we must be able to find out and at the same time any time we find out our children's triggers you shout less you won't even shout any longer at all at the same time it saves you time it saves you time then it helps the children discipline to be self-disciplined to be self-restrained it helps them you know to own their own when any time we allow them you know when time we look for their triggers anytime we look for how i mean what motivates them to work what motivates them to connect with the right value system we want to give them any time we see that we, we, they, that thing will always save us the time it will save us the stress of having to shout save us the stress of having to put them through things over and over again so this is what we must really pay attention to then the last one is over correcting over correcting i've done it before and once in a while i think i fall into this spectrum so i won't come here and be telling people that you know uh you know uh, the job of parenting is just like a walk in the park that oh, it's so easy no, no i don't do that i don't do say no once in a while i still indulge in this why is that so because i have been nurtured i have been raised in that manner every one of us every adult that we see today we are products of our early emotional life let me say that again every adult every parent every teacher every leader regardless of the level of the position that we occupy today we are products of our early emotional life the way we were raised, we want to raise our children. The way some of us were pampered, right? 
We want to pamper our children. The way some of us were pummeled, were beaten, thoroughly beaten, you know, all those beating, right? We want to do the same thing with our children. We see today's children through the eye of the way we saw ourselves when we were their age. That exactly we do. We indulge in overcorrecting. When children do something the way we didn't feel that they are not supposed to do it that way, we are not happy. And we always want to come in almost immediately, correct them. You know, this I taught you, this I taught you. Hello, parents. Please calm down, calm down, calm down. It may not work. And I will tell you the reason why it won't work. Because of the generational shift. Their own generation and our own generation. We tend to see the children through the eye of how we were raised. We want to correct every step of wrongdoing. This can lead to, you know, obsessive, you know, behavior. And that is because we have not tamed, we have not trained our emotion. If we have not trained our emotion, it's possible we will fall into the spectrum of overcorrecting. So the same way where over the same way overparenting stunts the growth of our children. Let me say that again. The same way overparenting stunts the growth of our children, stunts their effective learning. The same way overparenting makes our children to grow brazenly in errors. The same way overparenting makes our children to grow as brittled adults is the same tenacity. It's the same strength, if not double, right? Overcorrecting, demoralizes the self-esteem of our children. Do you understand that? We don't want our children to be overparenting. We don't want to be overfunctioning over them. We don't want to be doing everything for them all the time. If we don't want to do that, and we believe that when we do that, uh, there is always a problem or problems at the end of it all. The same way when we correct them too much, the same way that correction, you know, uh, aids in demoralizing them. Let me tell us what will happen. You know, when we allow them, when we tell them to do certain job and they didn't do it right and we move in immediately. Oh, you have to do this way. You have to do this way. No, no, no. That's not how I taught you. That's not how I taught you. You begin, we begin to shout at every given time. We begin to shout at them. Didn't you see the way I did it? Didn't you see the way uh, 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 the children of the neighbors did their own? Didn't you see? Can't you see? Even, don't you see the way your elder sister does her own? You know, a lot of things this will cause to them. You know, one of those things, I have like, maybe like five, yes, I have five that will come to them when we overcorrect our children. When we overcorrect them, regardless of the fact that we are at home 24-7, means a lot, I mean, means nothing to them. When we overcorrect our children, they feel inadequate, that's number one. When we overcorrect them, they feel inadequate. Number two, they feel not measured to the standard. They feel not measured to the standard. Number three, they feel unloved. They feel unloved. Number four, they feel rejected. They feel rejected. But guess what? Number five, the last one, which is deadlier, you know, than all the four I mentioned. When those four, four are taking place, the next thing for our children to begin to do is to begin to search their identity that is not lost along the spectrum of emotional flood, along the spectrum of depression, because there is nothing they do in the house that the parent appreciates. Im immediately, uh, we give them certain things to do, and they didn't do it the way we want them to do. We want them to do it. The next thing is we begin to correct them. In correcting them, we are likely going to abuse them. 
In correcting them, we are going to demoralize them. In correcting them, we are going to, you know, uh, you know, make them, you know, we, they drop their shoulder. They, a lot of things are going to happen to them. They feel unloved. They feel inadequate. They feel not measured to the standard. They feel rejected. And at the same time, they begin to look for their identity along the spectrum of depression, the spectrum of emotional flood, all manners, identity that is not lost. They begin to look for them. So those are the three things I want us to pay attention to. When we think we are available for our children, when we think that, or when we know that we engage them 24 7, we are around them. Please pay attention to those three points. The first one is don't impose, but expose them. Right? Number two, uh, don't uh, over correct them. Don't over correct them. Then, number three, that is what I entitled look out for triggers around them. Every follower has gotten triggers. Look out for trigger. It could be one or two. But I tell you, even if you get one, if you get one of the triggers for your children, you know, everybody is made for life. You know, the way we say it in this part of the world, that if I'm able to do this, I am made for life. For life. So when parents, I have about five, you know, but those, the other uh, six, the other three, they are in my uh, YouTube uh, video. You could just Google them, you know, and uh, have the opportunity to, you know, to know all this content. You know, they will be so helpful unto us. You know, when we capitalize on all these areas, it's, uh, it, it's the best moment the parents can ever enjoy in life. So please don't forget, Legacy Hot with Akinroko on Ovation International Television, you know, is on our TV decoder. Our TV decoder is a one-off payment uh, decoder. Once you get the decoder, you get it installed in your house for all the lovely programs that they show. You don't need to pay no monthly subscription, just one uh, payment and you begin to enjoy, uh, you know, the lovely programs on Wednesday. Uh, Ovation, I mean, Legacy Hot with Akinropo on Ovation International Television on our TV will be aired three times a day on Wednesday. Then on Friday, three times a day as well. Then on, on Sunday, three times a day. So if you have relatives in the UK and other parts of Europe, Ben TV, Ben TV, meet me up there. Legacy Hot will be renting with Akinropo on Ovation International Television on Ben TV for the people that are in the UK and Europe. So, it's been an awesome engagement so far. Uh, this uh, video is still going to be here for a while, so we can still come back. But I would love us to take questions. I mean, to uh, I would, I would like, I'd like to take your questions. Let me have your questions. If you have any questions, you have any experience, you have any, you know, any experience you want to share with us, you know, you want to share, you want to know, let me uh, handle them now. Let's handle them together. Let's reason together about the way forward on this. Don't forget, regardless of the fact that 10 times, I mean, 24-7, we are at home with our children. 24-7, we are at home with them. If three of those things that I discussed here are lacking, it means nothing to our children. This is what I want us to pay attention to. So, questions and answers. Duchess Interiors, thanks for joining. King Tunde Ogunshuba, I appreciate you, sir. Thanks for joining. As a gift, thanks for joining. As a gift, thanks for joining. Ratch, Ratch Bolags, Ratch Bolags. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce that very well. Thanks for joining. Star Baby, I appreciate you. That Timmy Dio, thanks for Amo Amo Cakes. Thank you, sir. Madam of Mobile and your Lady Thank you for joining. I appreciate you. I do not take this for granted. 
for everyone that has made it possible to be on this live session this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Allah, Allah Sheboni, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Adania, thank you. Mrs. Fumilayo Adeboye, thanks for joining Essential Foods. I appreciate everybody who has appeared today on this show. So, in the absence of no questions, so we can just call it a date. Uh, and at the same time, we meet next week. Or possibly, if there is any other interesting and compelling stories uh, that come up in the course of the week, maybe that people need to know, I will come up on this live session once again. I want us to pay attention to this. And at the same time, uh, you know, coming to a live session like this is just one uh, is, is just one of the things, one of the processes we need to do. You know, making use of everything, the nuggets that we discuss about uh, makes really a lot of uh, difference. Don't forget, parenting is not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. I'm not prophesying, you know, evil, but that is just the, uh, you know, the truth about it. And that is what I want everybody to pay attention to everything that we do. It's just a process we keep learning by the day because I believe that, you know, arrogance is knowing you can succeed if you work hard enough. Arrogance is knowing we can succeed if we work hard enough. But arrogance is thinking it will be easy. So is parenting. You know, arrogance is thinking parenting will be easy. Arrogant is thinking parenting will be easy. Sorry, let me do it. Let me, I mean, let me rephrase that. You know, knowing that you can succeed and you work towards it is excellent. Knowing that you can succeed and you work towards it is excellent. But arrogance is thinking you can succeed in it when you don't work towards it. It's the same thing as parenting. So arrogance is thinking parenting will be easy. No, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. But the only thing that can make it easy is when we give ourselves to knowledge by the day. Okay, thank you. Would correcting a two-year-old to ask before taking anything be seen as too much correcting? No, ma. No, ma. That is not too much. That is not too much. It's not too much. It's not too much. You are not asking too much. And I even like the fact that it's still a two-year-old child. So, Telling him that always ask before you take anything in the house is not too much. Let me tell you when it's too much over, I mean, when it's over correcting. It is over correcting when a two year old child is throwing a tantrum and you are trying to beat him or her for throwing a tantrum, or you are trying to shout him or her down for throwing a tantrum, or you are, uh, you want to like. Uh, give, him, give him or her what he or she wants at that particular time that is throwing the tantrum and uh, throwing the tantrum, tantrum. That is when you can say that over correcting. Because if there is another chance, I will come here to talk about tantrum as well. You know, the best way to kill a tantrum, to make a tantrum die a natural death, is to ignore the child. So, over correcting, this is not over correcting. This is actually the right thing to do for a two-year-old child. It's not overcorrecting. Maybe when you start another example, maybe that would qualify to be overcorrecting. But this one, uh, thumb up for you, sir, uh, for you, ma'am, for doing this. It's not overcorrecting at all. It's possible that you, it's, it's okay that we're doing this at this present moment. Thank you. What do you do when, as a parent, you keep telling your child about housekeeping and not doing it? Now, let's handle this from this angle. Number one, how old is the child? Then I will give you, I will cite you an example. Okay, let me just put it this way. Just keep doing what you do, ma. Tell him to do what he's supposed to do. Lay your bed, sweep your room, right? Then you put equation there. 
The equation you are putting there is this. One of the triggers. It's possible he likes gift or she likes gift. It's possible she likes attention. Attention is one of the triggers. Attention is one of the triggers. So it's possible he wants. So when you have understood the trigger, all those triggers, when you have understood them, and you tell him or her to clean the room, to do it in a certain way, this, I mean, cleanliness is next to godliness. And at the same time, the way we say it matters. We don't tell them to clean their room because when their friends come to see them, they see their room clean. Or when my own friends, father's friends, when they come to the house, they see our house clean. Many of us make that mistake. I've made that mistake in time past. When we begin to tell them that, don't you know that when people enter my house, when they, I mean, they must see my house clean. No. We tell them to clean their room, clean the house, because cleanliness is next to godliness. When you clear your room, when you make everything around you clean, you attract a sweet a silver from God. You attract, you know, great things around you. Your health will be okay. You'll be perfect. You live well. You live healthy. So when we tell them to do certain things and we hang it, you know, from what is in need for them, what is in need for them, not what is in need for us. So they will do it. That's why I talked about equation. If he doesn't do it, fine, it's 15. It's 15. 15 is old enough to begin to attract severe penalty. When I say severe penalty, I know what I'm talking about now. So that you don't just take that severe penalty out of context. So what I mean by severe penalty is simple. Equation. If you don't do this, you don't get this. So when we do that, they will be able to do what is needful. If you don't clean your room uh, neatly, you don't you don't have a, you won't have access to your phone, you won't have access to your game, your PS4 game or PS whatever, right? So when you look at that, but I want to tell you, a 15 year old child, I can assure you, just keep doing it, keep telling him or her to clean the room. One day, he or she will do that. And I'll give you one strategy to do that. Just tell him or her that one day you want to invite uh, a friend of his or a friend of us into the house. And when they come, they are not staying in the parlor. They are staying, excuse me, they are staying in their rooms. When they hear that, they don't want their rooms to be in a total mess because their friends are coming. So there are many ways to do that without shutting them down. There are many ways to do that without going over those instructions, you know, over and over and over and over again. Because one of those things that I learned early enough when I started this parenting ministry is always allow the children to have the last word. I know this is not what many of us are really used to. Always allow children to have the last word. Don't make it the fact that you want to prove a point. When a child says something, then you too, you say something again. So when you see that the conversation is degenerating to that level, the next thing for parents to do is just to keep quiet. Because we don't have their energy. They have the inquisitive energy to always want to know the why behind everything. So the best way to keep that so that it doesn't degenerate into unnecessary you know, shouting about between uh, the parents and the children. It always allow them to have the last say. But you know where you are going. You know, you know the equation. Equation has already been set. If they don't do it, you don't have access to this. So that's one of the best ways. Then once you say that, you don't go over it again. You don't go over it again. I bet you they will be the one to do it. Because a 15-year-old child is already a bubble or a, a, already um, a big girl. A way, in a way. So, thank you. So, in the absence of no other questions, no other contribution, let's call it a day. Uh, so, uh, it's been an awesome engagement. I want to thank everybody for coming on board your time. I do not take this for granted, you know, the resources that you have put in to make sure that you are here today. It goes to say that you place a premium value on quality parenting. And don't forget, let the job of parenting be, uh, I mean, uh, the most paramount of what we do. 
you know, because it is not about our children, it's about the other children they are going to meet. This is a global village. Our children are not going to be with us forever. They are not going to be with us forever. They are going to meet, you know, uh, every, and they are going to meet some other children. When they grow out of us, when they get to university, some of them will not study here in Nigeria. Even when they study in Nigeria, they meet all manners of children, teenagers around them. How do we want them to relate? Do we want them to run away from the, the, from the fact that someone is not behaving very well? No. So that's why, let us make this a global village, that the job of quality parenting is a responsibility that every one of us must do. Our children will grow out of us, they meet people, I mean, throughout the world. How do we want the world to relate? So, don't let us be selfish about this. Let's invite people. You can share this video, share it with people that you know will need this knowledge. Thank you once again.